Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. It's been a while since I uh, filmed anything upstairs here, but we had a little accident last night with my jade plant, which I'll get to in a second. But I just want to say the sun is out. Uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous day. It's finally not minus 20 or minus 30 out. You can have the door open, you can have the window open, getting some fresh air. So anyways, like I said, we had a little bit of an accident last night with this uh, jade plant. It actually fell off the table and I just want to show you, it is super top heavy. Like even just the slightest touch. So yeah, there is a little bit of damage. Uh, it, Oscar is running around like crazy. Um, yeah, what is he doing? Uh, so anyways, uh, we lost a branch there and there is a few other areas uh, like right here, this uh, branch is snapped as well. So lost a bunch of leaves. So yeah, it, uh, it got pretty banged up. So I'm gonna have to pull it out of this pot, put in something a little bit larger, just so it's not uh, top heavy. I'm gonna have to maybe do a little bit of pruning here as well. It's uh, pretty uh, lopsided, a lot of weight on this side. So I'm gonna chop back a little bit. So I'll, I'm just gonna answer some questions along the way as well for uh, jade plants indoors during the winter and what I do uh, to care for them. Um, if you can propagate them, if you can repot them, that sort of thing. So let's get into it. So I still keep my jade plants in my south facing window throughout the winter. And even though it is getting a ton of bright light, I'll show you here with my light meter. Right now, it is still getting almost 2000 foot candles. It's 152, but um, it is times by 10. So it is getting around that uh, almost 2000 foot candles. So even though it is getting a large amount of light, the days in the winter are shorter. So you will probably notice your jade plant not growing as uh, vigorously or as fast as it would in the summer, just simply because the days are shorter in the winter. It's not receiving as much sunlight as it normally would, even though it's still getting a ton of bright light. So I guess the next question is, is can you prune plants or succulents in the winter? And the short answer is yes, but um, just due to the shorter days, you'll probably notice um, very minimal growth or very, very slow. I did a little experiment, um, I wanna say maybe a month ago. I chopped the top off one stem here and it is finally just starting to push out uh, the smallest little stem right here. I wanna say this was a previous um, branch before the prune, so uh, you can see just a very, very small branch where this should be much larger. Um, or have grown much faster if it was during the summer. So yes, you can prune. It will start to uh, branch out or push out some new buds, but uh, just expect that rate of growth much slower throughout the winter. Even on my other ones here, um, it really hasn't pushed out any growth uh, for the last couple months. So I got uh, this jade, uh, this one right here, this uh, larger tree version, and I got another one right here as well. Um, it has been losing like right here, you can see a little leaf has been losing a couple leaves that is uh, completely normal with the summer comes the heat and the sun so uh, the plant uses all that energy um, from the sun as well as water and nutrients to push out new growth so now that everything is slowed down you probably won't have to water as often but it can be pretty difficult to tell when to water a succulent or a jade plant in particular and i always say um, obviously if the soil's dry i check the leaves uh, jade leaves should be very uh, thick very plump and you should not be able to fold or bend them so this one you can see just slightly it can be slightly bent or folded so I'm not going to quite water this one yet and same with the golem jade um, you should not be able to bend the leaves this one's okay it's well watered don't have to water it for a little while and I know I just watered this one so you can see the leaf I cannot bend it it's very rigid but when you come over to which is it? this one right here um, you can see I can slightly fold it so this plant will need to be watered I just kind of go through all of them here uh, this one will definitely need to be watered. Um, it's a little bit tougher because there's lots of stems in this one, but the soil is bone dry and the weight of the pot is, is very light compared to um, a well-watered plant. So this one will need to be watered and this one, it's okay. All these leaves are fairly uh, rigid, very plump. 
Even in the winter months, uh, you shouldn't have to worry about overwatering as long as you have your succulents in the appropriate soil. So I only use a cactus succulent mix for my plants. It is formulated for uh, these plants specifically, and I think it's got like a higher sand content as well as uh, some perlite uh, mixed in the soil. So it just makes for a well-draining soil. So I will water these, like I'll soak it until it comes out the bottom of the drain hole. And again, until the pot is, uh, is feeling much heavier. So I'm just gonna find a little spot where I can the watering can in and just give it a good soaking. I'm just going to fill it up, if you can see it or not. I'm giving it a lot of water. I'm just going to let that drain through until it comes out the bottom. It should come out fairly soon. This one is pretty dry. I don't remember the last time I watered it, so it'll probably need a good couple soakings. So far, I've used half the can, a little, little more than half the can. I can already feel the pot is significantly heavier. Look at the little pups. There's Zoe, she's not in many videos. She's our old Shih Tzu and Oscar is now sleeping in her bed. So she's probably a little bit upset about that. So she's just gonna stand there and I don't wait it out. Oh, there she, she's looking at him. Okay, might be a while. Okay, so I'm gonna give it one more good soaking here. I'm gonna put it back in the sunny spot. So I've probably almost used the entire can for this small little pot and not much has actually dripped out yet so that's telling me this was uh, this was in need of a good thorough watering. All the soil is kind of soaking that up right now. I'm just going to leave it in this tray just to uh, let all the water kind of drip out the bottom and then I'll put it back in the south facing window. Okay, so I brought the plant downstairs. I'm going to, like I said, uh, repot it in something a little bit larger. So here's the pot that I picked out for this. It's a little bit shallower, but it's uh, quite a bit wider. So it should provide a more solid base so this thing doesn't get uh, so tippy. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pot it up in this, but I'm going to prune um, this one side right here. You can see it's a little more lopsided. So you got a lot more branches kind of poking out the top here. So I want it a little bit more even. So it's like a nice uh, round canopy and not so, um, I guess, lopsided or um, uneven weight distribution on this side. So I'm gonna chop this up a little bit, gonna cut away some of the damaged leaves as well. Whenever I do my pruning, I always, kind of pre-plan where I'm gonna make the cuts. And like I've said in previous videos, you can manipulate a jade plant to branch out in a certain way. So if you want uh, branching, um, say like uh, this way, instead of going um, the opposite way, what you look for is the direction of the leaves. So you can see right here, each little section or each little node will have two leaves. Whichever way the leaves are facing is if you make the cut above that, that's where it's gonna branch out. So you can see right here, the leaves are on the left and the right, and you can see it uh, gets a branch from those same directions. So if you want a branch uh, coming out on this side, as opposed to this way, um, you wanna make the cut just above there and you will get a branch on, on the same side as the leaves, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This thing got pretty beaten up. You can see there's just a leaf hanging off there. So you can just literally uh, pluck a leaf off, put that off to the side. I'm gonna do this one here too. This one's just hanging off. You can propagate these, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Just uh, set them aside. So I'm actually going to, I'm gonna take this one off too, just so you can see. Uh, right here, you can see this leaf is uh, facing uh, this direction. So I'm gonna cut just above that leaf, just like that. Even with this uh, little cutting uh, snipped off, it has drastically reduced the weight of this branch. So it will, I guess, not pull this plant over as much. Here is another, actually, I'm gonna do this one right here. So this leaf is busted off here as well. So I'm just gonna take that off. Now, because I made this cut, I'm gonna get a branch on this side and this side. I'm going to snip this one off, like right there so that I now get branching from this spot and this spot. So I don't have two branches branching in the same direction. They're going to kind of cross over each other and eventually fill in this area um, quite nicely. And I probably should have, oops, I just 
cut that off. Never mind, that one just fell off. I think it was already just hanging on there. Um, I'm not gonna do a hard prune right now. I'll probably do that in the spring. I might cut back uh, some of these branches uh, quite aggressively, but just for right now, um, I'm going to just, this is basically for weight reduction um, on one side. So I'm just gonna kind of look over this one here as well. So I've decided what I think I'm gonna do is just defoliate. So I'm gonna remove some of these leaves. This will help drastically with weight reduction as well. So I'm just using my hand, just kind of twisting them off. You can use a set of pruning shears as well. Um, wherever it branches out, I'm just gonna take the leaves off. Here's another little piece up here. Again, set these aside. Um, I'm gonna remove this one back here as well. So like I said, this will drastically reduce the weight um, this little guy right here, I don't know if you can see it, but it uh, stems off of a branch. So I'm just gonna pluck this off. And I think that's what I'm gonna do for now is just um, leave it intact. I'm not gonna prune it. I like the structure here. So it branches out right here and then it bifurcates right there. So I have made a couple prunes. So that's basically what I'll do when the plant uh, branches out like here. I will cut it um, maybe one or two nodes above that just so it gets a nice full branch structure in time. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave this alone for now. Actually, I decided to cut the top off. So I got a branch right here, so it branches out this way. I don't want a, a branch uh, in the same direction. So right here, I'm gonna go one node above. So it's gonna branch out from here in here. So I'm gonna cut this little top off just like that. And then this one up here, I don't want this branch to branch out in the same direction as this one. So I'm gonna go one node above that. So I will get a branch from this side and this side and one from here and here, um, hopefully in a few weeks. Okay, so now the zoomed out portion, you don't really see that one branch kind of hanging off to the side like it was before. Like I said, in the springtime, I'll probably do a little bit more of a harder prune, but I think this is uh, good enough for now. Just gonna kind of rotate it. You can see this branch, it's not as high. It's still sticking out, but uh, it's okay for now. I think I'm gonna leave the rest on it. And I just wanna show you guys just the trunk. This thing is beefy. So I get a lot of questions about how to get like woody stems or how to get thick stems. Uh, this all comes in time. This plant was taken from a cutting, probably no larger than this, about four or five years ago. Um, one way to get a, uh, a tree structure like this is obviously from pruning and time. This is the brown woody stem, and you can see the soft, pliable uh, green stem right here. And as this plant continues to grow, it will change to a more woody stem. Let's see if I can get a better picture. So right there as well. We got a woody portion and a, a, a green soft pliable. Eventually it will, it will become this uh, woody bark stem. And they're absolutely gorgeous. This is definitely one of my favorite plants that I have in my collection. So when it tipped over last night, I was pretty worried. All I heard was like a big thump. You can still propagate these cuttings in winter. It's uh, no different than it would be in the summer. So I just removed the lower leaves off a stem cutting like this. I'll let it callus over for a day or two and then literally stick it in soil. It will uh, grow roots, but it might take a little bit longer than say if you did it in the springtime. I did propagate my first jade in water about a month ago, maybe a little bit more. And there you go. This is what jade plant water roots look like. They're very thin, they're, uh, they're super fragile. Um, but yeah, this is the first time I've ever, I can't get it back in there, but this is the first time I've ever propagated a jade plant in water. And honestly, it's probably just better to stick it in soil. That way you don't have to train these water roots to adjust or transition to soil. The plant will use the moisture from the leaves to basically root itself. You don't even have to stick this in soil. Honestly, you can just literally set it on a table and you will probably notice some roots uh, poking through eventually just on its own, but uh, stick in soil. You don't even have to water it that much. Um, in fact, I would not recommend watering it for, uh, for the first week or so, because obviously there's no roots to soak up the water. Um, the plant will use all the moisture um, stored in the leaves to root itself. That's how it, uh, I guess, maintains or sustains itself until it starts to root in soil. So yeah, stick it in soil. 
and then you're done. For the leaves, um, you can just literally set them on top of, again, let them callus over, let them uh, sit on top of a tray of soil like this. So you can see right there, it's getting some little roots that will search out into the soil by itself. Uh, there is a little bit of new growth popping through the leaf. So let it root itself, let the uh, plant continue to grow. And I got one right here that has been in this pot for a while. So I just literally uh, placed the leaf in there, didn't touch it. It only gets uh, water whenever I water the plant. And you can see this uh, new plant is still attached to the leaf. The leaf is still thick. I will usually let this uh, kind of dry up and fall off. Um, but even right now you can cut it off. Where's my pruning shears? Where's my pruners? So you can just cut the leaf off as well. I had a question about that the other day. So it is well established in the soil. Just snip it off like that. Um, I wouldn't snip it off with a plant smaller than this because it still uses all the nutrients and moisture from this leaf. Like it's still, um, it's not flimsy or anything, maybe a little bit, but it's not squishy, it's not rotten. So that leaf was still good. So you can cut it off if you don't like the look of it, but I wouldn't uh, cut it off with a, uh, a plant any smaller than this one right here. I got another couple on the back here as well. This one's starting to branch out on its own. So now I'm gonna pull this plant out, put it in something larger, but um, can you repot plants in the winter? The answer is yes, but typically you wanna wait till springtime, uh, just for the reason, like I mentioned before, this is uh, not growing as fast and vigorous as it was before with the leaves and the branches, and the same is true for the roots. If you damage the roots while repotting this, it's probably gonna take much longer for that root system to repair itself and to eventually, um, I guess, establish a large enough root system for growth in the spring. So if you can wait until springtime to repot a plant, that's the reason why, at least I think so in my research. So everything just grows um, much slower, but if you need to, like if it's absolutely root bound, um, if you need to change out the soil, it's just not absorbing the moisture like it uh, usually did, or if you're getting lots of leaf drop or something like that, then by all means, take it out of the pot, put in something a little bit larger, but just don't expect you know, an explosion of uh, new growth or anything like that. So all I'm gonna do is uh, take this little knife, just uh, lightly around the edges, try and loosen it up a little bit. It's pretty tight in the pot and I think it's root bound. Um, because I can feel some roots crunching, but that's okay because uh, jade plants, they don't like or they don't mind being in smaller pots. These are um, pretty well known for uh, bonsai plants as well. And those guys have them in like super shallow trays. Um, they just do like a root prune and root training. Oh, this thing's in here, good. This might be a little more difficult than I thought. I thought I was just gonna be able to just pull it out easily, but this one is, it's in there. So I'm just gonna go around the pot. Sometimes with the terracotta pots, they're quite porous. So I find a lot of the roots will actually adhere to the sides of the pot. So before I start yanking on this plant, I'm going to make sure it's loosened enough so that I can just pull it out. Oh, that thing's in there. Okay. Starting to loosen it up a little bit. If your plant isn't like super huge, you can usually push it from the bottom as well, through the uh, little drain hole, but yeah, that's not happening. I gotta go around the entire side, loosen it up. I am gonna have some root damage, so I have to be careful on how, oh yeah, this thing is sticking right to the side. I can feel it. Oh my goodness. Look at these roots. These are all roots. Holy cow. Okay, that was definitely root bound. This is all roots, this is crazy. It definitely stuck to the side of the pot. Oh yeah, that's super interesting. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet with this. Um, normally, I would try and loosen these roots up, like, oh, is this roots? Yep, that's all roots, that is so weird. It's completely, taking the shape of the pot, especially at the top here. So yeah, these are all roots. So yeah, like I was saying, I normally would loosen these up, but you can see all these roots are super fine. I'm definitely gonna do the bottom. So once again, my camera just uh, shut off automatically. I have no idea how much uh, video I lost, but um, I did take this little root 
uh, fabric thing off the side. You can see there's some much larger roots there. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna do is just remove these very fine roots like this. Oh, losing another leaf. Just off the side. So there is a much larger root system underneath it. These ones, I don't even know if they're alive anymore, but I may do the same. Just see if I can peel this back a little bit. See if I can loosen up the bottom a little bit. But um, like I was saying, most times I wouldn't disturb the roots. I would just put it in the pot and let the roots kind of search out on its own into the new soil. But with this one being so root bound, I think I'm going to have to um, at least loosen up the, a little bit of the bottom. And I'll try and not disturb as much as possible. Can probably even just do it lightly like this. There you go, that's all I'm gonna do. The rest of the soil, like it's not compact. You can see it's quite squishy. Okay, so I think that's all I'm gonna do. The plant will do the rest. I'm gonna put it in this pot, fill it up with some uh, succulent soil, and uh, then this will be done. This is so crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a jade plant like this. And I don't think I repotted this all too long ago. Definitely last year, you can see it's just stuck to the side. This is crazy. So you can see the pots are pretty much the same size, but uh, this one is uh, quite a bit wider, like I said. So I'm just gonna fill in the soil around the edges. Here's the uh, cactus and succulent mix that I'm using. I'm not usually brand specific. Like I don't really use miracle Grow anymore. Um, but I just gotta use up this bag. So it's a nice airy mix. So I'm just gonna add soil, like I said, in kind of around the pot, and then this project is completed. So I'm just holding the plant down just because it wants to tip over. I'm just making sure that it's in the center of the pot. I'm not gonna add any soil at the bottom. I'm just gonna allow these roots to, uh, like I said, search out and grow along the sides more. So I'm just gonna add soil along the sides and then I'm just gonna poke it down with the pencil here. I'm just gonna get some kind of evenly spaced around just so this thing doesn't keep tipping over. Once again, I filmed a bunch of footage and my camera cut out. I, I, I am so glad I ordered a new camera and it actually came in the mail today. But I filmed an entire uh, couple minutes of me explaining what I'm doing, so um, I'll explain it again here. I did have to uh, place this a little bit different. So this portion of the stem was kind of hanging off to the side a little bit, so I straightened it out quite a bit and then I added a bunch of soil along the backside here and I poked it down or I poked the soil down just so it's uh, nice and snug. So it is now supporting itself in this upright position. Now I'm simply just going to fill in the uh, soil um, just slightly below the line here. I should also make mention that I am not going to be watering this plant right now. This plant does not need water. All the leaves are thick and plump. So if I give it water right now, it's probably going to uh, remain a little bit more on the damp side. So I don't want to give this uh, plant root rot. So I'm not gonna water it until it needs water. Otherwise, I'll just let the uh, roots kind of uh, heal and repair themselves. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below. Thanks for watching all my videos. I appreciate the support. Take care everyone, bye.